Are you ready to start your machine shop, but you don't quite know where to begin? My name's Rebecca Wolfinger from Millspec Manufacturing. On today's episode of Becoming a Practical Machinist, we're going to go over the six most important steps when you first begin your business. So let's jump right into it. All right, step number one, file your LLC. Please do not get intimidated by this process. It's simple, straightforward, and you do not need to hire somebody else to do it for you. You're gonna begin by going to your Department of Secretary of State website. Now scroll through the website until you see the part where it says file your articles of organization. Once you get there, you're gonna realize that there's an option you can either do a paper form or an online form. Whichever one you choose, it's gonna be about two pages worth of information you need to input. It usually starts by saying your company name, your name, address, and a couple other small details. Nothing major, I promise. At the end of that, you're gonna be asked to pay for a filing fee, which in North Carolina was $125. Now, while we're talking about the LLC and filing, I want you to make a mental note that your LLC requires an annual report and an annual fee. So for North Carolina, I have to log back into the Department of Secretary of State website each year and then pay the $200 fee. If you do not do this, your LLC goes inactive, but don't fret if you miss it, just go ahead, log back in, pay your fee, and it will reactivate it. No big deal whatsoever. All right, so you filed your LLC and you got the letter in the mail that everything's approved and you're ready to go. What do we do next? That brings us to step number two. You're gonna go to the IRS website and file to get your EIN. That stands for Employer Identification Number. This is absolutely critical so that your business can pay for the taxes, it can get a business banking account, and also for when you hire employees. Now this form is completely free online, and if I remember correctly, you actually get issued your EIN once you submit it and everything's processed. It's a very quick third or second step. Number three, open a bank account for your business. Now you can go one of two ways with this. Some people might actually prefer to have a local brick and mortar bank location, while others might lean towards an online banking service like QuickBooks. The benefit to something like QuickBooks is you're gonna be able to write estimates, invoices, manage your transactions, and pay your vendors all in one place. Now, whichever route you decide to take, I will give you one piece of advice. Do not mix your personal banking information and transactions with your company transactions it will make your life an absolute nightmare when it comes to tax time. Number four is build a website. Now to me, this is probably one of the most important steps outside of the, the legal stuff that you gotta get set up. This is the first impression people are gonna get of you and your company. You know, this is where people go to find out about your services, to find out your location, your contact information. It's really the place where you start building your brand and let people know who you are. And you can go a couple ways with this as well, just like the banking situation. You can either build your website yourself, there's plenty of great platforms like Wix or GoDaddy, or you can actually hire somebody else to build this part out for you. Now for Millspec Manufacturing, I actually built our website ourselves through Wix. Now the benefit to that for me was not only was it cost effective, when our company started changing because we started as a remote CAD CAM programming company and we transitioned to an actual brick and mortar machine shop, I was able to go into our website without paying anybody else to update our information. And I've also been able to add pictures and videos and really customize it to the way that our brand was growing. If you went with a person who built your website, you're gonna to have to keep hiring them to make these changes. So it's something to think about if you're trying to stay on a budget. Number five is to create a professional email address. When I say professional, I don't mean go out and get millspecmanufacturing at gmail.com. No, we are not doing that, okay guys? We are going to actually invest into ourselves and pay to have a professional custom email address made for our company. Now, by doing this, you automatically look more credible and you look professional. And when you email your clients and your customers, they're not gonna automatically think that you're a spam email because you have a professional email address. 
The added benefits to this is you have an ability to organize your emails and also people can reach directly to the person or the section of your company that they need to talk to immediately. So for Millspec Manufacturing, we have ours divided into two different sections. We have a contact at Millspec Manufacturing, and that is kind of like general inquiries, uh, goes to the offices, RFQs, and stuff like that. Then we have it broken down to the next part, which is Kurt at Millspec Manufacturing. So if someone needs to speak directly to Curtis, if they have an immediate problem with the program or they want to order something or have a question about a print, they don't have to go through the office through me to get to Curtis. It's directly to him. So not only is it going to keep your company organized, it's going to streamline your production in the end. All right, we are already at number six, which is going to be networking and marketing. Oh, you're not going to get customers if they don't even know you exist. And I promise you, you don't need to jump into paying for advertising right away. Being completely transparent, our company has paid for ads on Facebook, and we also paid to be a verified vendor on a platform somewhere. But we have generated the most leads through Instagram and LinkedIn just by being present and posting regularly. So what I want you to do before spending a cent on anything like I did, jump onto your free social media platforms. And I'm talking about Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and even LinkedIn, like I said. And I want you to just start sharing and interacting with other businesses. Eventually, what's going to happen is people are going to recognize your name and get interested in finding out more about you, which ultimately drives traffic to your website, which can lead you to possible customers. Next, I want you to talk to your vendors in the area. Vendors are like the glue in the manufacturing industry. Now stop and think about it for a second. These vendors not only sell products, but they are usually stopping into other shops every single day of the week. So if it's possible that you have open capacity, they might know a shop that is drowning in work that can outsource it to you. So it's the best type of networking is just getting to know your vendor. If they want to stop by and welcome them, you know, create a relationship with them. And very last, start attending networking events. If you have a manufacturing expo that's local to you, definitely attend it because you might meet extra vendors, but also potential clients and other business owners. I hope these six steps really help guide you in your journey of opening your machine shop. If you have any recommendations or maybe you did something differently, please let me know in the comment sections. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm looking forward to sharing future episodes of Becoming a Practical Machinist with you. Thanks for watching, guys.